What's going on you guys? Fulst here and I'm back with another video. In today's video I'll be doing an in-depth Silas jungle guide. Silas has just been released not too long ago and I have been practicing him a good amount. His ultimate mechanic is a little bit strange but overall very effective especially once you pass level 16. He's a very good late game champion when it comes to team fighting just because you can use literally every single ult the enemy team has to offer in one fight. And overall, his early mid game as a jungler, he has very good ganks. He's overall just a very, very solid champion. And yeah, just let's get right into the runes now. Now, the runes on Silas are pretty straightforward. They do have two options, though. You have the electric nuke path, which I wouldn't advise as much because sure, you do a little bit more damage, but you're way less tanky. The rune I would recommend you to go for is Aftershock. Now, why Aftershock? The reason for this is you proc Aftershock when you use your E, like the chains from your E on somebody. So as soon as you go in, you get Aftershock a every single time. There's like no other way of really proccing it except for like maybe an ultimate, like a Malf ult engage or something like that. That's the time you proc Aftershock. So as soon as you go in, you become a lot more tanky. And let's say you can work with that with Morgana ultimate, with maybe Malphite ultimate again, just engage ultimates. This rune allows you to do those engage ultimates and survive. If you go electrocute on Silas and you have those ultimates where you really need to jump into the enemy team, like a Malphite ultimate, for example, you are most likely not going to survive it unless you have Zonias, which I mean is a core item on Silas, but still like Aftershock just tanks so much damage for you with the increased armor and magic resist that it's overall the best rune to go for. And it just beats like anything just because it procs when you just the right second you go in with that E. So this is what I run on Silas most of the time or like every single time actually. I've tried Electrocute a couple of times and overall I've just died way too many times with this rune. Like you go in and you just get clapped. So overall if you were if you do really want to go Electrocute though then Electrocute Sudden Impact Eyeball Collection and then Ravenous Hunter. Ravenous Hunter is great on Silas because it synergizes really well with the fact that he needs to sustain whilst being able to just go into the enemy team and this healing just helps a lot. And then for the secondary page here, you want to get Revitalized and you want to get Shield Bash. Now Shield Bash is very, very good on Silas because of his E. He gets a massive, massive shield from that. And the damage from this just scales with your shield. So overall you gain the armor magic resist and then also you get extra damage with it so this is a really very like good synergizing rune with silas's e and then you have revitalize here which also works with your e to get bigger shields but it also works with your w to get a bigger healing back when you're low hp so this combined with Revenant hunter will pretty much get you to full hp if you're low and yeah that's that's really the setup and then for this double adaptive force is what you want because you want to get as much damage as possible and then here just do whatever the enemy team has. If you're facing magic resist, or facing magic damage, get magic resist. Facing armor, get this, and you're good. Now, with the one I go for is Aftershock. Shield Bash again, for the same reason. Shield Bash is just a great synergizing rune uh, on Silas with his E. Then you want to go... Now, here's actually a couple of options. Into early game matchups, I tend to go for Bone Plating, just because it gives me the upper hand in those early clutch fights. When it comes to maybe fighting like a Lee Sin or something like that. Just an early game jungler. Bone plating actually helps a good amount in blocking enough damage from them. To be able to win that fight. And then obviously your W will give you a good amount of healing back as well. But this just helps me survive those early game fights a lot. If I am not in those early game fights. I tend to go with conditioning. Because it just gives you the more value. And if you're not facing an early game jungler. There's really no risk in it. So then you can go to the conditioning. And get more value out of it basically. And then getting revitalized, it just synergizes really well with his kit in general. Shields, heals increased. That's just great. Now secondary, Sudden Impact, Ravenous Hunter. Sudden Impact, you dash a lot, so getting that extra magic resist. Or magic penetration, sorry. It just improves your damage a good amount. And then Ravenous Hunter, again with the Ravenous Hunter revitalized combo to increase your healing. And that's just going to keep you alive a lot better. Same here, Adaptive Force and just whatever fits. So those are the runes for Silas. Let's get into the item build. All right, so the item build for Silas. You go start the Hunter's Talisman with a refillable potion. Hunter's Talisman is the one you want because uh, it procs off your like your passive. So every time you hit someone with the AOE hit or like a jungle camp, you get that passive. And then this is going to keep your health up. 
this is really the only way Silas survives the jungle clear. If you go for a machete, you pretty much just die in your jungle. And that's definitely not something you want. So just start this and you're good. Now, the first thing you want to do on Silas is rush the blue smite. Like, runic echoes enchant as fast as possible. This is going to keep your mana sustained in your jungle. This is also just going to keep you with, like, sticking to people a little bit better. You do have that chain for the engage and you do have a slow. But overall, the blue smite is better than just having red smite on silas because you're not gonna be in extended fights for that long you want to burst champions and you just want to get in get out as fast as possible so blue smite's the one you want to go for now after that you want to rush your boots as fast as possible having a lot of movement speed on silas is very important he's a melee range mage so you have to get to the enemies and of course you have to dash and the e to close a lot a lot of distance but having that extra move speed as fast as possible is very crucial also, as a jungler, having tier 2 boots this fast is better for roam speed, which then is also better for clear speed. So that's why you want to get these as fast as possible. Also, this damage synergy with the magic penetration and just having the runic echoes is a pretty big power spike in damage. Now, the next item you always, always, always want to get is Zonias. Now, some of you guys might be like, wait, uh, Lich Bane is a very good item on Silas because it synergizes with his passive really well. And yes, you are right, but Lich Bane is not a good early item on Silas because you want to have survivability to be able to use those ultimates, to be able to go into fights. If you just rush a Lich Bane after this build, after this right here, you can get insta-killed. And that is definitely not something you want. You want to avoid that at all costs. So getting that Zonias allows you to go in whilst also getting a good amount of tank sets when it comes to the armor factor. And then the active from this just allows you to survive. And that is the most important thing. Plus... Zonia's active synergizes very, very well with a lot of ultimates in the game. Think Nico ultimate, uh, Morgana ultimate, Malphite ultimate. Any type of engage ultimate, you can go in, deal a lot of damage because those AP scalings, Silas work on those ultimates. So you're, those ultimates are going to do a lot more damage than they usually would. And then you can just press Zonia's to survive or just that, get a Morgana ultimate off or get a Nico ultimate off or anything like that. It synergizes so extremely well with a lot of ultimates. That is a crucial item to get as fast as possible. So these three items are 100% your core. And after this, I tend to finish it off. Or not finish it off. You have a couple of item options. Most of the time I will get a death cap after this. You have the Lich Bane as well. You have Banshees. You have the um, Spellbinder and Void Staff. Now, of course, you also have Morello. But this is a very niche item. And I wouldn't really pick it up that often. But yeah. So after Zonias... The thing that helps you the most in 99% of games is getting a death cap right after it because it increases your ability power by 40%. Plus, it also gives you 120 ability power just straight up. So this right here, the death cap by spikes your ability power up a lot, which just in turn means his shielding goes up, his healing goes up, his damage goes up significantly. Overall, this death cap improves everything in Silas's kit so much. Survivability, damage... This team fight one shot potential, everything. So this is the reason this item is so good after Zonias because Zonias is just a single item that allows you to survive so much if you time the active correctly. So yeah, that's really the reason you pick up Death Cap here. Now after Death Cap, there are several options. These four items are pretty much the rush every game, no questions. After this, it highly depends on if you are ahead what the enemy team has and all that. So let's just talk about Morello first. If you are ahead and you can just go with the magic pen from this, that's good. But then I would only recommend you buying like the Oblivion Orb just to have 15 extra magic pen to snowball a little bit harder over just having, because if the enemy doesn't have magic penetration, this Void Staff is not really, or not magic penetration, magic resist. Void Staff is really not gonna do much. So having 15 extra magic pen is just gonna improve your damage a lot more because you're pretty much feeling true damage at that point so that that would be the case there but then i would only buy the oblivion orb the only situation where morello actually comes in like clutch and you want it is if the enemy team has a lot of healing like maybe mundo soraka anything like that even silas but of course you're playing silas so that's not going to happen but anything that is relies on a lot of healing you want to get that morello for that healing reduction in your kit in your build so definitely pick up morello then apart from that just kind of stay away from this item it's yeah just yeah now next up you have voice staff of course if they're building magic resist and after this like after these four items 
Enemy team starts to like tends to build magic resist because they start just to see how much you actually hurt, like how much impact you have in team fights and how much damage you deal. So they start building magic resist and then void stuff comes in very, very clutch to get that 40% magic pen to where your damage is still very relevant. So in those cases, just build void staff. If they build magic resist, build void staff. Now, as a sixth item, you have Lich Bane. Also, I do want to mention if they don't have the healing. Uh, on the enemy team so morello then becomes like you only buy it for a magic pen it is a better option to go for a lich bane as just a straight damage item if they don't build magic resist you can just build a lich bane it gives move speed it gives ability power overall but the active is the big thing here because it works in an aoe on your passive so you go in with anything you hit the aoe passive and just gonna hit the entire team with that lich bane proc because the damage goes up amplified so that's why Lich Bane is a crucial item on uh, Silas and you always want to pick it up 5th or 6th item. Now if you are ahead, Lich Bane is a very good 6th item, 5th uh, item, sorry. If the enemy team has more magic resist, it's a better 6th item because then this turns out to be more of your full build. Uh, well, full build before selling stuff. Because these two items here, Banshees and Spellbinder, really come in when it comes to selling your other items. Spellbinder is an excellent replacement for your boots. Boots, 18, 18 magic pen late game, not that relevant. You have the void staff to get most of the magic, like magic penetration off you. The big thing here is that the 120 extra ability power spell binder offers you is a lot of extra shielding, healing, damage, just everything in general. And this is a very good replacement for your boots because it also gives you 10% move speed, which means you do not really lose the like the, the, the speed that you're roaming the map, you have still have good enough speed even without boots just because of the 10% here. And then you also have the 7% from your Lich Bane. So this combination gives you 17% move speed and pretty much makes up for the fact not having boots. So Spellbinder is a very, very good replacement for your boots late game. Now, your jungle item is also very good to replace for, wait. You replace your jungle item most of, ga most of the games for the Banshee's Veil. You already have Zonias, which gives you the armor you want. Then you have Banshee's Veil, which is going to give you the magic resist you want. Also, the Spell Shield is a very, very good thing to prevent you from just getting one shot by random things. Like, you can get hit by maybe Karthus opening up a team fight with a Zultimate. Or whatever it is. And maybe Nico dives in, jumps up in the air with Ultimate, and then Banshee's can block it. You can also Zonias that, of course. But there's a lot of stuff Banshee's blocks for you. And overall... This item is very, very good because it just makes you more tanky in general and being more tanky on a melee like mage is very, very important. So usually when it comes to this late in the game, this is my full build. I sell my jungle item for Banshees. I sell my boots for Spellbinder. And then with this build, you have a lot of ability power. This means your shield is massive. Your healing is insane. And if you steal maybe like a Malphite ultimate from the enemy team or an Ezreal ultimate or something like that, you can easily hit the entire team for 1500 damage or more with that just that ultimate just because you have that much magic damage and those ultimates have very good magic damage scaling as well so that's overall this is the item build for silas if you guys have any questions on this make sure to put them in the comments below i will do my best to answer those questions for you if you guys enjoyed this video so far please make sure to hit the thumbs up button this champion took me a while to figure out i can tell you that much so just yeah any appreciation for that Highly appreciate it. And let's just get right into the gameplay section now. All right, welcome to the gameplay section of this guide. As you can see, I'm playing Silas, of course, into a Jarvan. Honestly, there is really not any matchup that is that bad for Silas because Silas has a very good early game when it comes to fighting. As soon as you hit that level three, you get invaded pre-level three, which then in turn, that, that becomes the problem. So if you can avoid that by simply going for the quickest level three clear you could possibly do, which is starting red buff, doing crux, and then doing raves. Getting invaded on that is very, very unlikely. And overall, as soon as you hit that level 3, you become very strong. Your kit synergizes very well when it comes to dueling. You have aftershock, so you can easily win a lot of fights. And as soon as you get all of your abilities, you can synergize your passive very well to get all the clears to your jungle just down quickly. Because... The most important thing here and is what you will see here on the Raptor camp as well. I'll slow it down for you. 
So I hit first, then I E, use my passive hit, E again, use the other passive hit, then Q, and then use the other passive hit. You want to do that as fast as possible, make sure you get all the passive hits off, because that is where the jungle clear comes from. Getting those AoE hits off every single time applies the burn from Hunter's Talisman, and then that's gonna, the way you're going to clear most of your camps. Now as soon as you were here, just wait for another skill to come up and you click that, hit the passive hit again if you have to, in this case I didn't. And that's where you hit level 3, and this is really where you start to become very, very strong. The main objective you want to do is get level, just get through a full clear. If you can manage to get through red buff, Krux, and the, um, yeah, just your, your entire clear, just full clear. If you can get through that, the likelihood of you losing to any other jungle, like 1v1 fight, is, like, very low. I'll turn off the Fog of War to red side. Go back a little bit, because this is going to impact the, l the next bit a little bit. Go back here. So I'm doing wolves, I'm just casually clearing down. Now, we just saw Jarvan on top side here, as you can see where the ping came down. So, for that reason, I was like, alright, well, uh, I guess I could just... Before getting the Gromp, usually I full clear, get level 4, and then I start fighting for maybe this Gromp, if it's... Or a Gromp, uh, Scuttle, if it's still up. Because you'd be a little bit more healthy at that point. But yeah, I was like, alright, Jarvan was just like literally topside. So like, I might as well go for this. And then he just suddenly appears here. So literally what he did, he ran from here. Straight down to this scuttle crab, which is an interesting play. Gotta say, I was a little bit surprised. But then, of course, I got like, yeah. I got kind of engaged on by the bot lane as well. I made the mistake here though, if you can, as you can see right now. Also, by the way, Silas is the uh, second part of his E, so the way you want to engage on the Scuttle is you just dash towards it and E it. It removes the armor magic resist, which is going to kill it faster because it CCs the Scuttle Crab. But that being said, right here, I wanted to make sure that I got this. But what I did right there is I accidentally hit my W as well, which dashes me into the Jarvan a little bit more. Which then made me get hit by Nami Bubble and I just, yeah. I mean, I got collapsed on, what can I say, right? It was just bad. I'm currently sitting on 900 gold, which pretty much is the back. Like, as soon as if you can back with this, just having this stalker's blade right here, you should be fine for the rest of the time. You can easily get a little ganks off with the slows, and your jungle clear will just be fine. So I just die both side, and instead of going to uh, the camp that is still up here, which the Grom, I mean, it's still up. I did still get the scuttle, so I did still get the level four. But since this is up, I, there's really no reason to run down here. The reason for that is your jungle is gonna respawn from Grom all the way down to from Crocs all the way down to Grom. Sorry, and for that reason, if I walk to here, then it's gonna respawn in a different order. So I have to walk here, go all the way back top side, and then clear down, which is gonna cost too much time. So I just opt to have the Grom up still, and then I just clear from top down again. Maybe get a gank off on Mundo because this camp wasn't up yet. So that's why I'm just chilling in this brush right now. Seeing if maybe a Mundo comes in. And of course he teleports back to lane, which I was kind of expecting. I just stay in between Mundo and the turret. I do miss my chain there. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Now I might have missed something. So again, just me chilling top lane, waiting for maybe a teleport or something to get Mundo. Yep, there he is, so he teleports. The main thing I'm doing here is I am standing between me and, or like between Mundo and the turret. To get as much damage off as possible, and honestly, right at that point, he just teleports back. There's really not much he could have done. I'm pretty sure Aurelia either just killed him, yeah, she just killed him, and we kind of forced the splash out of that. Probably, yeah, it splashes down, so yeah. Now, here, very, very important thing to remember just on any jungler in general if you get a successful gank, always try to push for maybe one or two turret platings. This is gonna set you in a very good gold position, mainly, and something you just want to do. Now right here, Silas is a very nice mechanic to get the camps, like that wall for example, you can cut a lot of time out by just dashing to the wall, hitting your E on the uh, big croc and just going from there. So basic clearing, make sure again to use your passive as effectively as possible between every single spell you do. Both of your E hits prop your passive, so make sure to keep that in mind as well. So right there, just clearing, just clearing. Hit level 6, which is a very big spike for Silas, because this means you can start stealing ultimates. And if you look at the enemy team right now with ultimates, you have Mundo ult, which if you steal that, mainly is going to affect um, in the later game, like level 16, you can uh, lead with stealing Mundo ultimate and then just activate that. The next ultimate you can steal is again up in 15 seconds because of the Silas ult cooldown. So you get all the healing to survive the team fight, and then, for example, you can use Jarvan ultimate. 
this physical damage here on Silas turns to AP damage scaling, so for that reason, if you hit a Cataclysm on the enemy team, you can just burst them straight up. Big ultimate to take note of here is Vladimir ultimate. Steal that, apply that to his team, and you just deal extra damage as well. It is a very, very nice team fight ultimate, so if you steal that, it's great. Ezreal ultimate, great for snipes too, so you can steal Ezreal ultimate, shoot that through the enemy team, they lose like half or three quarters of their health, or maybe even you one shot them late game, because you are building full AP, and Ezreal ult scales off of AP very, very nicely. And Nami ultimate, also great ultimate when it comes to just team fights in general, you steal that, you throw a tidal wave through the enemy team, applies big, big damage again, because Silas's AP scaling is high, and yeah, that's just the way you kind of want to look at, at ultimates. Look at them like, all right, which ultimate is going to be good in which, in which situation? In this case, Vlad, great team fight ultimate. Nami, great team fight ultimate. So those are my two biggest priorities. Nami can be used for maybe an engage and Vlad can then be used to just drop it onto the enemy team if the fight is going on to amplify damage and it works that way. So this is how you want to look at ultimates. And this is why playing Silas into teams with great ultimates like Karthus jungle is a big thing right now. And Karthus ult, you can just yoink that for yourself, use it against the enemy team as well, and like, yeah, it's very, very nice. I'm just going red buff, and at this point, there's nothing for me to clear at the moment. My Crocs will spawn again, jungle topside down will spawn, but I believe I just saw Jarvan bullside maybe. Did I? I might have done. At least I knew his blue was up. There's a ward on it from Aurelia right here, as you can see. So I knew it was up, and since everything on my side is down, there's no scuttle crap up, I might as well just go for it. I am, like, level 6 on, on Silas is big. You can start one to running the enemy jungler very easily because you can steal their ultimate. And by out just outplaying him that way, it works. Now, Grom spawns here too. Pick that up, make sure to steal as much as possible. There we go. Now here, this is a very, very crucial thing. If you are a laner, top lane, mid lane, whatever, if you are just a laner in general, this ward right here, this control ward, in any position, not, not even for just top side, but maybe here for bot lane, or like maybe on mid lane on one of the sides or something, is very, very good, because this just means, all right, I could just dash over, walk into the brush and wait, or maybe go in even still, but this just allows your jungler to gank very easily for you, so that's a very big thing to remember. Kind of just waiting, maybe Mundo walks up a little bit, which, I mean, he kind of does far enough. He flashes pretty much instantly. Now, the big thing here is Mundo is very low. He has already used his ultimate, so the main, my, my main objective here is just to get, again, as much turret plating as possible. That's really what I'm looking for. That's what I'm going for. Now, of course, the engage range on Silas, especially if you have flash, is pretty big. And here, we just... Diving Mundo is also very easy, by the way, just you'll see because of the ultimate. So I go in, I flash E, just engage on him. I'm pretty sure I yoink his ultimate here. Do I? I actually didn't. All right, that, that's that's kind of wasteful. Your ult's really not a bad cooldown. 68 seconds just straight up of using it. I might, I'm, I could have just stolen Mundo's ultimate to heal this back. Because that was easily doable and that's what I should have done. Try to not be afraid to use your ultimate. It's up very, very quickly. Especially once you hit level 11 and all that, it's up really fast. You just use it in any altercation and you're fine. Now here, the main objective is just to get that first turret down. Getting at the turret plating first turret gold is big. It scales very, like, it, it, it snowballs you very well into the game. It's a very big objective. For that reason as well, by the way, just a note. I'm not sure if I did it this game, but I do it most games. Getting a 10 minute Rift Herald, or between 10 and 14 minutes, get the Rift Herald then and use it on a turret that's still up. You get all of the turret plating gold of that. So let's say mid turret has like five platings. You pu you pick up the Rift Herald, you walk the mid lane, you use the Rift Herald, you get instant four platings, which is 160 gold of plate. So if you are alone, just that is an insane amount of gold. Even if you split it with your like your your laner, it's still like a kill each. Like it is so much gold to just pick up Rift Herald, use it on a turret plating, and just yoink like six, seven, eight hundred gold of that turret. So that's a big thing, and that is definitely something you want to opt for a lot. There, I'm just getting some clearing down. I'm guessing I'm looking for some vision into the enemy jungle. Yep, there we go. And then just go gang bolt from behind. 
I steal Ezreal ultimate. Ezreal ultimate is a very nice ultimate if you play Silas. It's an AP ultimate as you can see right here. I, sh I shot the Ezreal ultimate to combat this turret pushing. But look at just the sheer damage it does. Like that, on Jarvan, that's nearly half his HP bar of just one ultimate. And I don't even have that much ability power yet. I have this. If I have more ability power, that can insta-kill. So that's like the big thing with Silas's ultimate and just stealing stuff. Now again here, opting for as much turret plating as possible. I'm pressuring, always pressuring for that turret plating. So again here, bot lane, we just get turret plating down. We get this turret down, I believe, as well. Just, yeah, we just go for turret. And then the next objective, of course, becomes uh, going mid. Uh, this... Alright, about that play, <laughs> I do remember this. I was like, ah, you might, I could just dive to Nami, right? I don't know why I was thinking this, but, you know. So I just go in, I pretty much just got killed by Jarvan showing up, and yeah, we just die. That's a bit of an overextended play, and we should definitely have just backed off. The better play in this specific situation was just recall instantly, get Rift Herald, and run mid lane with that Rift Herald, get the rest of the turret plating before it hits 14 minutes. That would have been the best play, so you guys know as well. Focusing that and just getting Rift Herald pre-14 minutes, using it on an outer turret for all the turret plating gold is a very, very strong play and gives you a lot of gold. So just, that was the best play I could have done there. Not what I did this game, but that was the best play. Again here, just clearing. I'm really wondering when I go for that Rift Herald. Usually I'd, I would have done it by now. Right here, I am with Aurelia. I'm just here chilling. You see Mundo. Garvin's here as well. Right, oh, I do remember this play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, right here, I do have the stopwatch, mind you. I do right here have the stopwatch. I could have used it to block most of that damage. But the timing on this, as you can see in a second here, the timing of those ultimates hitting me was very, very surprising. So first off, like that. Okay, wait, that's too fast. God damn it. Alright, play happens here. So this is real time. This, that combo, Ezreal Ultimate hit the same time Jarvan's knockoff hit me. At the same time, Jarvan then ults to continue that and I just insta-killed. If I, like, would have stopped parts beforehand, I would have prevented all that damage, would have still been full HP and we would have won that fight. But because that literally just insta-killed me, they got us there and yeah. Oh, it's just another, like, kind of out of position play. Not the greatest. Not much else to say about that, but yeah. Alright, team goes for Dragon here. Let me go back a little bit. So here, you just join Konami ultimate, and you can just use it to zone. I did misplace that ultimate a little bit. I should have placed it up further to where their escape path was. So if I put it, like, here, this could have just killed Nami very easily and also killed, knocked up the Mundo, which made him an easier kill. So I misplayed that ultimate a little bit. Also, that's something you take note of on Silas. Don't just spam R on a target. Just click it once. Because if you spam it, you you steal that ultimate and you instantly use it. That's That might have been what happened there because that's terrible positioning. But if you just double click it really fast or like click it like a couple times really fast, you just instantly use that ultimate. And that's definitely not something you want. Just click it once, relax, and yeah. Let's just go up for the dragon. I'm really still wondering where I go for this Rift Herald here, because usually I would have done it by now because of the turret plating. There's just some jungle clearing right now. Alright, team fight goes down here. I engage here on Ezreal, as you can see. I yoink Vladimir ultimate because this really, I get the Vladimir ultimate on Ezreal and Vladimir right here. I get the damage off, this amplifies my damage here. As you can see, it deals a lot of damage. I pretty much insta-kill Vladimir as soon as I get my W up. And Ezreal just, like, he's doomed right here already. There's not much else he can do. He's gonna die to Vladimir ultimate regardless. And yeah, that's just a very good use of Vladimir ultimate in that specific situation. Now here I get engaged on, or like the, the Arella get engaged on by the Jarvan still. I'm not that afraid because right here as you can see, I even though I'm low, look at this healing. So I go in, I press W, I heal for like 600 damage because I have Revitalize, I have Ravenous Hunter, I just have straight up low HP. And all that just increases your healing so much, you get your entire HP bar back every time. So you can stay in a lot of fights with this Kingslayer and yeah. 
very low here. I just opt to press Zonias or press the stopwatch just in case. I don't want to get killed by some random shit. I don't want to overchase this. At this point, my W was still on cooldown. So that Zonias again there just kind of secures me my life. Victor dives and gets the kill on Mundo. I still... Alright, finally something gets done on the Rift Herald. My bot lane engages on it. I didn't even do it this game. Like, oh my god. Just remember, guys, if, like, that Rift Herald, very big play, 3 14 minutes to get a turret down. Oh, look at that damage, by the way. Ezreal started ulting, which. Right here. So my ult's up. Get hit by Nami Bubble. Ezreal here gets his seed, starts ulting, I yoink his ultimate, I shoot it right back at Ezreal. I pretty much half HP the Nami and hit flat for a lot of damage there too. That's a good, like a lot of gold to get back at. I'm pretty sure, if I actually look at back at this play, right? Yeah, right here, this is what I thought. I'm sitting on 4,000 gold, that's a lot of gold to be sitting on, I should not be fighting this at all. I still am though, but yeah. And here it insta killed Ezreal pretty much. At this point, I should have been backing already. I have sitting on 4,400 gold. Definitely not something I want to be on. Just back, dude. Come on. If you have this much gold, don't go into fights. Just just back. I think I wanted to just begin these fights. Vladimir lands a very clean ultimate. Deals a good amount of damage there. There, I opted to go for the back. Muno walks off a little too far. And I think I still go in on this, maybe. I tried to help him out. Get CC'd by Nami. I do kill Vladimir with my W, heal a lot of HP back, but because I was ignited, I didn't get the full heal on it, and I just died, really. Currently, 4,800 gold, though, which pretty much is my Zonias and my Death Cap instantly. As you can see right there, I just bought Zonias and Death Cap. That's a big buy. Big, big spike. My team opted to go for Baron. I got there in time. Let me go back a little bit more here, actually. Just play the switch lower. So, my, entire, my team is really low at this moment. I go in, I finish the Baron first, get that Baron. Just look at my positioning. I press Zonias here to not get killed, wait for my cooldowns a little bit. I press W on Vlad, pretty much gives me full HP back. And then I just opt to go out. That W Kingslayer is insane. It healed me my entire health bar back. And that pretty much allowed me to survive. And also, my Zonias is a great item. Because that item prevented me from getting killed, really. And I can just heal everything back. Another thing to note, and is something I should have said earlier, the order of maxing Silas's skills is W first. Like you start uh, E level 1, then pick Q level 2, pick W level 3, then max your W first, get Q second and E last. The reason you want to do it that way is because W first is going to give you the best 1v1 potential, the greatest healing, the greatest damage, the best thing you can get is that. The rest is more so utility and the uh, Q is really just for the increased slow on it. The shielding scales off your AP, so it kind of works just with items straight up. So it's better to get Q uh, second and then E lost. That's just an FYI. I do want to mention that. I'm playing all the way back here. There's really not much I'm afraid of. I can just press W and get most of my HP back. So I'm really just walking forward here still. Maybe looking for a potential engage play. Alright, another team fight. Teamfight is really where Silas excels at because of being able to steal those ultimates. So let's see what I do here. He's right there. My Q does a significant chunk of damage to him right there with the Ludens block combination. Walk up, see Vladimir. Yoink his ultimate, instantly put it beneath Vladimir and Mundo to get the damage on them. Vladimir is really just gonna die to his own ultimate at this point, I think. Yeah, he dies to Vlad ult. So then we just start chasing this again. He can guide me, I can get low, I don't really give a shit. Because as soon as you have that Kingslayer and you get in range, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite low here, but I'm still going, I don't really mind. I get the massive shield on it, get my W heal for like 450, and kill Ezreal. Nami goes in here, tried to kill me, got close, uh, Kai'Sa healed me, which is very nice, and I survived. That's a big thing on Silas in team fights. look for the best ultimate to go for, which in this case was Vlad ult. I put it down, I killed like pretty much Mundo and Vlad with that. And then I just kept going. Like, every time your Kingslayer is up, just keep walking at them. It doesn't really matter that you get low, especially if you still have the Zonias active. If you get low, you just press W, you heal all, your H all of your HP back. Something you do want to note is, try to avoid using your W 
if you are not low or if it's not an execute on the enemy. So if the enemy is full HP, don't lead with your W. That's a terrible play. Either way for you being low or the enemy being, le being low. Here it's just joined Mundo Ultimate, which is, I can just activate that to get the healing in, uh, as you can see right here. So I'm a little bit low and I'm I'm having this feeling that I'm gonna get engaged on. I might as well steal an ultimate at this point a little bit early. So right here, I just press Mundo Ultimate and the healing, as you can see with W and all that, is keeping at full HP the entire time. I can just keep walking at the enemy team because I have Mundo Ultimate. Keep going forward. I do miss my E on the flat there, which is pretty bad. I get ignited, press Zonias, another great defensive tool there, and I just keep going. Keep walking forward, keep playing around Kingslayer's cooldown, it's a very, very big thing. Playing around that cooldown for that massive healing every time. Also playing around for shield cooldown can be a very big thing too. Now Ezreal and Jarvan chase the uh, other dude here. I pretty much insta-kill Ezreal at this point. I chunk uh, the Jarvan right there to note, by the way. I, I stole Ezreal ultimate. Uh, did I press backspace? Yeah. They chase Aurelia. The best best thing to do here, uh, um, Jarvan's already chasing Aurelia. There's really not much I can do there. The closest one to my range is Ezreal. Mundo is teleporting behind me, so I just opt to go for Ezreal. Chain him in. Q, uh, you can, by the way, another mechanic. As soon as you use your Q animation, you can pr instantly press W to you hit those at the exact same time for an insane burst. So your Q comes down, and you instantly slam in with your W. And then you can insta-kill like what I just did to Ezreal. I just bursted him for like 1400 HP or something like that. Right here I see Jarvan. He is stunned. I shoot Ezreal ultimate at Jarvan. As you can see, it pretty much half HPs him because Ezreal ult does a lot of damage with the AP I have. I go in here, but if you look at the cooldown, my, my Kingslayer is on a, on a one second, or like a one second cooldown, maybe a little bit longer. It's still on cooldown here. I just got it back. I didn't get the chance to press it. Maybe if I didn't flash and just press it on Jarvan, I might not have gotten CC'd long enough, but I tried to flash out and then go back in with Kingslayer, but that didn't really go that well. I, my Kingslayer had just a little bit too much cooldown and my Zonias wasn't off cooldown yet, so that was an unfortunate play there. I just spam through some death timers here. The main objective I have right now for myself is getting level 16 as fast as possible. Level 16 is the biggest spike Silas has because it allows you to steal an ultimate from the enemy team every 15 seconds. That is massive and it's, it just impacts a lot of stuff. So the engage happens here topside. I'm just gonna go in from behind, look for a target that I can get to. Vlad's right, pretty much right there and yeah. I mean this is just an easy cleanup by walking around. I steal Nami ultimate by the way and look at the damage because of Silas's AP scaling, 536 AP. I'm pretty sure I hit Ezreal here, like that's pretty much half his HP gone instantly from just a Nami ultimate. That's a lot more damage than that ultimate would usually do. And here, I, I just go in, I don't really mind my Zonia as up so I can just use it here. Pretty much saves my life again. Play around cooldowns, E is back in just a second and my W will be back up soon as well. Victor goes very, very hard on that one, gets both. You're just hitting turrets. Also, your passive works in turrets, so if you use your like your skills and try to hit uh, turrets or inhibitors with that, the damage goes up as well, and just from uh, basic auto attacks. Right here, we pretty much get all their turrets and inhibitors. We can go for Baron Dragon and end the game off that. I should be hitting level 16 quite soon as well, so it's really kind of what I'm looking for to, like, to get before anything else. That's level 16 right there. I back, I get the Ethos Wisp, which is gonna build into a Lich Bane, but I don't think I get the time for that this game. We just Baron. By the way, a smiting tool for Silas as well. You can again, what I just mentioned earlier, QW, you can land us at the exact same time. So you leap with Q, and then press W, smite the exact same time. That can easily be about a 2000 uh, damage smite, which is very hard to deal with for the enemy jungler. So that's the way you secure Baron, just QW and then smite the exact time you press W. I believe that you missed that a little bit. So in this fight, I stole Ezreal ultimate first. Now, if you look at this right here, the damage on this, uh, Ezreal deals 650 damage. And because I have 672 ability power, look at the 605 number on that magic damage amplifier. This ultimate does a lot of damage right now. And you will see that on the Ezreal here, I believe. If I'm looking for an opportunity. Let me go speed up a little bit more. 
Like any of these poke abilities, by the way, like Ezreal, like those ultimates that poke, stealing those first before team fights start when you hit level 16 is crucial. 15 second cooldown on your ultimate doesn't really matter. Try to use those ultimates as fast as possible as soon as you steal them as well to get more ultimates and team fights in. So I just want to lead off, maybe poke like the AD carry or maybe more of the team here. Fire the Ezreal ultimate on these two. Insta kill Ezreal. Like that was literally insta kill on the Ezreal there. And the uh, Nami got half HP. So yeah, at this point, I mean, I'm just killing for my team a little bit, trying to uh, just deal as much damage as possible. Right there, I blocked flat ult damage with Sonia. Sonia's again becoming the crucial item there. I heal for about a thousand with my W to get back up in HP, and you just win the game. Late game silence is very hard to fuck with because you are pretty much unkillable whilst being able to use every single ultimate the enemy team has to offer. And this overall is just how you want to play Silas. If you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button below. It means a lot. And yeah, if you guys have any questions as well, put those in the comments. I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. If you guys have guide suggestions as well, put those in the comments too. And see you guys in the next video. Bye.